just might be the best sub $100 CPU of all time. Welcome back to Tech215, I'm your host Nick, and in today's video, we're gonna be doing a full review of the brand new Ryzen 5 1600 AF. We're gonna be doing a ton of synthetic benchmarks like PC Mark 10, Unigen Heaven, and Cinebench R15, as well as benchmarking a ton of games like Battlefield 5, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, Apex Legends, and of course, Fortnite. So if you're in the market for an ultra budget CPU, this just might be what you're looking for. Let's get into it. All right guys, so let's take a quick peek at what the Ryzen 5 1600 AF actually is. It used to be the Ryzen 5 1600 AE, but it now has a shrunken down die from 14 nanometers down to 12 nanometers. It's six cores and 12 threads and has a base clock speed of 3.2 gigahertz but it can overclock to 3.6 GHz using Ryzen's Precision Boost technology. It has 20 Gen 3 PCI Express lanes and has a total TDP of 65 watts. And it also features 16 megabytes of level 3 cache, all coming in at an MSRP of 85 bucks. On our test bench today, we'll have the brand new B450 Aorus M from Gigabyte, 16 gigabytes of G-Skills Trident Z RGB 3000 megahertz RAM. For our boot drive, we'll be using the Corsair MP510 240 gigabyte NVMe Express drive. And for our graphics card, we'll be using the GTX 1660 from MSI. All right guys, it's time to run some benchmarks and first up is Cinebench R15. At stock settings, 3.2 gigahertz, we came up with an average FPS of 95, and when overclocked, we got an average FPS of 108. That's really nothing out of the ordinary. That's pretty average, but that's not where this chip really shines. The Cinebench score at stock settings was 1187, and when overclocked, we saw gains up to 1268. This is where this chip is really going to shine. The six cores and 12 threads are going to give you increased workloads and you're going to be able to multitask at a much higher rate. So next up we have Unigen Heaven and at stock settings we saw an average FPS of 125 and when overclocked we saw an average FPS of 129. Again, this chip is not the best overclocker. The six cores and 12 threads is where you're really getting all your value from. And when it's stock settings, we got a score of 3162. When overclocked, we saw gains of up to 3256. If you guys remember when I did my i5-7600K build, this chip totally demolishes that chip, except in one primary category, and that was when the i5 was overclocked all the way up to 5 GHz. That is the only time the 7600K beat this chip. And I personally would rather have 6 cores and 12 threads and pay way less money. Intel chips are still way too expensive. And next up is a new test I'm bringing to the channel. It's called PC Mark 10. I'm sure you guys have heard of it, but what it does is it's a well-rounded test. It tests every aspect of your system from loading up programs to doing video conferencing. It actually does some 3D rendering, but it's really cool. And in the essential categories, we got an 8424. In productivity, we scored 6278. And in digital content creation, we got 7,019 with an average score of 5,152. I'm sorry we don't have anything to compare it to, but going forward, we will be using this test because when you buy a PC, you're not just always buying it for gaming. You want to be able to do content creation. You want to be able to do your schoolwork or some of your work from your actual job. And you're going to want a well-rounded PC. And I think this chip is that because of the high core count, high thread count. It's just an overall really great value CPU. You don't just want a one trick pony, you want something that's gonna be able to do everything that you wanna accomplish in your day to day life. All right guys, so let's get to the reason why most of you are here, games. First up, Battlefield 5. On high settings, at stock speed, we were seeing an average of 81 FPS, and when overclocked to 3.7 gigahertz, we were seeing an average FPS of 89. The combination of this CPU, a good budget graphics card, and a very well optimized game, this ran like butter. Hardly any micro stutters, nothing but clean and smooth gameplay from Battlefield 5. Next up, my favorite game from 2019, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. We were seeing an average FPS of 80 when at stock settings. When overclocked, we got a bit of a jump to 87 average FPS. 
and both at stock and when overclocked, we were seeing a max FPS of 114. This game ran smooth. When using this chip and a good budget GPU, you're going to have happy days. If you are a competitive Apex Legends player, this might be a great way for you to get off the console and get into PC gaming with the Ryzen 5 1600 AF. It's so well optimized and we had butter FPS all day. At stock settings we saw 94 FPS and when overclocked we saw an average of 101. The max frame rate we got was 145 FPS and if you are looking to play Apex Legends at a high refresh rate, get on to the PC version. It is so much better and this game so well optimized we saw amazing frame rates the whole time through. Alright guys, and finally, we have the most popular game in the world right now, Fortnite. Stock settings, we saw 88 average FPS, went overclocked, not much more, we got 94 FPS, but we saw a max of 119 FPS, and this game ran really smooth as well. I'm telling you guys, all the games I tested today are pretty well optimized, but they all ran really smooth. This is what happens when you have 6 scores, 12 threads, paired with a good budget GPU, you'll be having great frame rates all day, and I think this is where it starts. If you're on a super tight budget, look no further than the Ryzen 5 1600 AF. Alright guys, so that was my review of the Ryzen 5 1600 AF. Thank you all for sticking around this long in the video. And when I first started, I made a very bold claim that this was the best sub $100 CPU of all time. And I think it's actually true. I don't think that's such a bold statement. Where else can you get 6 cores, 12 threads, with 16 megabytes of level 3 cache? Intel has nothing like this right now. And I think if you're on a super tight budget, this just might be the chip for you. Because it's one of those chips where you set it, forget it, and you're going to have happy days playing games and doing productivity tasks all day long. But I do have two caveats I want to let you guys know about. First, make sure when you buy RAM, you check the QLC list for your motherboard. I made the mistake of using RAM I had from about a year ago, and it's very popular RAM. It's the G-Skill Trident Z RGB 3000 MHz RAM, and I didn't bother checking the QLC list, and it was a little bit of a pain to overclock, but I did get it up to 3000 MHz. But RAM is also at an all-time low right now, and you can get 3600 RAM for really good prices. I would not go any lower than 3000 RAM because Ryzen heavily relies on fast RAM to perform at its best. Second thing is, this chip's not a great overclocker. As you guys can see, a couple times when overclocked to 3.7 gigahertz, I did get some crashes and I had to reboot the system, but that's not really that big of a deal. From the video, you guys can see that even when overclocked, the gains are minimum and it's really not gonna make that much of a difference. So again, like if you're on an ultra tight budget, it's one of those things where you can set the chip in the motherboard, pop it in and start playing games right off the bat. And I think in terms of value, this is as good as it gets. I think all the Ryzen 5s are really good, but at 85 bucks, this might be the new ultra budget king. But that about does it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for sticking around this long. I know this was a long video, but I wanted to give you guys the full story as what this chip can really do. You guys can follow me on Instagram here. Check out my other videos, but please like, comment, and if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. Ring that bell for notifications so every time I post something, you will get instant notifications. And in a couple weeks, I will have the premiere of February's ultra budget build. If you haven't seen it yet, check out January's. I'll put a link in the description down below. I'm just so pumped to show you guys that. But that about does it for me today, guys. Thanks again for watching. I should be back in about a week with more tech content. Thanks so much.